The following program contains material which may be offensive to some viewers or may be inappropriate for viewing by children. Sexism and Homophobia, The Men's Process The fire that burns in the social, psychological, and spiritual dimensions of humanity can ruin the world. Or this fire can transform into community. It's up to us. Sitting in the fire, Arnold Mendel. In this program, and in this series, you'll learn about a group process called World Work, a process committed to building community by paying close attention to power, rank, revenge, and abuse in group work. World Work begins with the work of Dr. Arnold Mendel. Trained first as a theoretical physicist at MIT in Boston, he went on to study Jungian psychology in Switzerland. There he drew on other psychological approaches, Eastern philosophy, non-Western and shamanic traditions to develop his own approach to individual therapy. It's called process work. Today there are thousands of people around the world who have been trained in this therapeutic approach. In the 1980s, with Dr. Amy Mendel and other process work colleagues, Arnie Mendel began to apply these personal therapeutic techniques to class, race, gender, and other conflicts that arise at the group and social level, a process that is now called world work. So world work works at the, at the most uh, everyday level of rights and distribution of power and distribution of money and distribution of uh, uh, respect and what have you, and also at this deeper level all the feeling stuff and emotional human stuff, the upsetness, the antagonism, the great dreams and desires that we have, giving that a floor and letting that stuff come forward and speak. And so world work deals with learning how to manage and get deeper into the emotional and then even into the dream-like situations of all of us so that we can come together and work together better. The Mindells and other world work facilitators work with a variety of groups and businesses around the world. And over the years, they've held world work training seminars in Europe, in India, in the state of Oregon, and in the summer of 1999 in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. Here in Washington, as in all world work seminars, there's no agenda per se. The group as a whole tries to fairly sort through all the issues and concerns in the room and come to a consensus on which issue to focus. We have tried to get Northern Ireland on the board since we have arrived. I really would like us to focus on Holocaust and contemporary uh, anti-Semitism. I want to be heard. This is exactly what you do in international development. The pushes back on the agenda, back and back and down all the time. Our sister is here, who is indigenous, who is invisible in this country, Native American Indians. In my country, on my land, I'm invisible. I'd Hold like to speak. I have, a, I have a topic for eldership. And we Thank just want you. to get ourselves on the board. Uh, we can go on with issues all day. I come from Balkans, and I would like us to focus on gay and lesbian today so that we can really focus on what is happening over there tomorrow. And there's a lot of generosity and people from one community offering it up to the other. And there's also a spirit in the background that says, no, what I'm experiencing is so important. We must deal with it. It must come forward. Let's spin a pen. We're going to spin a pen. Gay and les na the war, the war on this side, Gay and lesbian on this side. And can we Gay and lesbian. Gay and lesbian issues. The gay and lesbian issue is always really fascinating for various reasons, but 
when I studied the tape of that issue, one, one thing of that day, one thing I noticed was that there's all these parallel processes happening at once. There's, 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 um, the, it's the intersection of issues, and you see this with every group process. I, I guess this one was just clear because I was facilitating it, but you could see sexism as a part of homophobia, and you could see that um, that there's homophobia and there's heterosexism, which are two very different things that not everybody appreciates. One, heterosexism is the prioritizing and the um, privileging of heterosexuality as a norm, whereas homophobia is um, a fear of the sexuality involved in homosexuality. So one's more of a sex negativity that um, people react, a lot of hatred of homosexuality is that visceral fear and reaction to, um, to the homosexual sex act. Whereas heterosexism is just the ignorance and naivete that, well, the whole world's heterosexual and sort of same-sex couples and same-sex love is overlooked. So those are two different, very two different issues. There's, and then there's also sexism. A lot of homophobia is really misogyny and drag, so to speak. Um, you know, there's a hate. The, the hatred towards homosexuality is towards male homosexuality is frequently a sexism. It's misogyny. It's this, it's it's put, the put down of male homosexuals is simultaneously a put down of women. Um, Sissy. Sissy, fag, and these were words that were very provocative in the in the in the thing. And as you can tell in the group process, when the men, the when the some gay men tried to address that, women were getting upset, and women were coming in, gay and straight women. So that was the intersection of issues because because to call to put a man down by calling him a woman is to put a woman down. And so right there, there was an intersection of issues, and they couldn't complete themselves because both were demanding recognition at that point. We're now going to talk, open up to talking about the gay and lesbian, heterosexism, homophobia issue that's on the table. Okay. I grew up on the streets here in Washington, D.C., and, 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 and the worst thing for a white boy to be called growing up was a punk because that questioned your manhood. And when that was questioned, you had to come out and fight. Can you say what you mean? Many people don't understand the word. Could you say what you mean what by punk? What the word punk, punk means? Yes. When the word punk, when I was a boy growing up here, meant that you weren't a man, that you were, that you were not a man, that you were a homosexual. I, I, I want to hear why I'm not a man. I don't believe, I believe you, I know I, you're a man. I, I want to hear what your thinking was. What, when you said uh, punk, what it meant that I'm not a man. When, when I was a boy with that conditioning, you mean? I don't feel that way now. I want to hear what you felt then. So tell Norris more, more about the conditions, or maybe someone else maybe can help someone him. Can, maybe someone can speak to that. Maybe there are other white males in the room who could speak to what Randy is asking about. I, I wanna, I'm somewhere in between my mind and my feelings, and I'm, I'm going to try and just communicate to you. When I, th I could relate to what he was saying, because I grew up in New York City. Okay. I grew up in New York City, and, and it's true what he's saying, that when you're a young man growing up, and, and I, I want to give you a framework. I'm talking personally. I grew up. Just tell me, Bob. Okay. It's okay. okay. Just say yeah. it. Just say it. Okay. Just say it. All right. He's waiting. Okay, okay. Just say it. I'm just saying, all right, I'll say it. The biggest insult when you're a young man growing up is to be called, okay, the biggest insult when you're a young man growing up is to be called a gay, to be called a faggot. That's, that's the biggest yeah, say insult. The word. Say, say the more word. about why say that's an insult. What why? is the piece about that that's so awful? <sighs> because it, it, it takes away your power. It takes away your rank. It takes away your power. It's vulnerable. When you say that to him, I notice you look away. And you don't mean to, but that may be part of heterosexual privilege, is to look away from the pain he has. Just notice that. Yeah. No, it, it takes away the power. It, it takes away the rank. It, it, takes, away my, it takes away the strength. That, and that, you know, it, it, what strength, it, it, that strength, that strength of what we think manhood is that I can be walk around and I can just tell all of you what to do, that, I'm, that I can just run this whole thing. 
It takes away that strength. It, it strips that away. Why? Okay. Okay. The feeling. Okay. Talk about the feeling of. Help me here. Um, he asked for help. There may be other yeah. men who could help yeah. him. If you, also, you can help him, please also, join him. Okay. Can please I join him if you, if you have something? On it, 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 I it, it, it's it, also the sexism that's mingled with it. I just want to name that. Yeah. Yeah. That the misogyny. Okay. There's misogyny and yeah. sexism yeah. that comes together. It, take, it takes me out of. It also. It also takes me out of the power that I have over women. It takes, it takes me out of that power I have over women, too. Say again? You treat them like women. Okay, okay. Wait, now, I, I just got to, I, I need help. Am I in a role or myself? Can I, I, just need can I help you out Be yourself, here, Baba? Baba. Be yourself. Okay. Be yourself. Okay. Just stay with it. Okay. Be yourself. Okay. Please, right. stay yourself. Okay. I could also help you out if you, because I, sure. I got this, too. Okay. May I? Yeah. Or you, you I, wanna go I mean, on? I can say... I don't, I don't think a gay man is a woman. I don't so, think that. So what do you think is me as when you were called faggot? When, what, say that again. When you were called faggot. Yeah. Yeah, what did you think of me as? <sighs> Somehow less, weaker, weaker, less, less. Yeah, at that, yeah, yeah. Different. Different somehow. Different sounds too nice. Okay, uh, I I can do it. I felt uh, okay. I can, I can, I'm I'm okay. Um, yeah. Uh, somehow something submissive. Yeah. Uh, what about that? Something. Uh, what about what submissive? That sounds yeah. the right direction. Yeah. That somehow a gay man is. Is is you know is in those is in a submissive role. In I want to note just the sexism yeah. that comes yes, in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Submissive yeah. and the oh, unspoken yeah. Yeah. like a woman. Yeah. 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 And 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 because of that is somehow is weaker somehow. I want to hear more. Okay. I want to hear more from you guys okay. over there. I want to speak. Man, do you want to hear more? Yeah, I, want, I, I want to hear more feeling. Man, I want to know I what the word. I want, I want to know what it means to be called faggot. When I, I was called a faggot. I want, me, I want it to know. I want it to know why I'm not a man in your eyes. Randy, on your side, so it's not yeah. a public abuse thing. Do you feel free to react? Yes. Okay. When I was called a faggot, and I was often called a faggot when I was growing up, I was already so powerless, I was already so beaten that that was taking away the one little piece of power that I had. At least I was a boy. At least you were a boy. At least I was a boy. At least, at least. Not a girl. The, there was the one, that was the one piece of privilege that I had. At least I was a, I was, so for me, at least I was a boy, at least I was a man, at least I wasn't a girl, at least I wasn't a girl, it was, it, it, it I wasn't a sissy, I wasn't, excuse I, me, excuse I, I still Lane. had my mask, I, I'm sorry, Lane. I, I want to slow you down for one second, Lane. because I, I, Lane, even if you could say, like when you say, I wasn't. It's like, I, I think you haven't even learned it yet. If you could say, because of the way I was brought up, because of the world that I live in, when that was said to me at that moment, I thought I was a girl or I wasn't a boy. But when you say it now, in the, it's like in the present tense, it's happening now. Some of the core of homophobia is hatred of women. Say it again. If I wasn't a man, if I'm not a man, if I'm a woman, what's wrong with that? 
If, if you no, call nothing's wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with that. But maybe I don't. Maybe maybe I'm not strong enough. Maybe maybe if I'm you, not strong enough. If, if you call that being a man, I'm very glad I'm a woman. I would not be proud Me of that. Too. I want to speak to the vulnerability that I'm feeling in the room right now. I want to speak to the vulnerability. The vulnerability that I'm feeling in the room and the tenderness that is happening right now and I don't, I want to protect that. I don't want people to attack right now. I want the vulnerability to be accepted. I really want to appreciate the issue of, of and, and I believe deeply and, and share with every woman in the room that at the root of homophobia is sexism. I really and and I really want to stick at one moment to what it means that you're a man and I'm not, or you're a boy and I'm not. I really want to know what makes, and I felt it. I knew that I. I want to know what makes you a boy and I'm not. Um, Randy, you you look like your your interest is in, in, intense and your ability to handle it is is wonderful. Um, some people are maybe having a harder time. I want to make sure that, that this side doesn't need to react a little more before we hear more. I just want to check. Also, Randy, if you re I noticed a lot of people jumping in to react on this side. Yeah. Sorry. And I just know. And I, I know wanted this. to encourage you to react at some point. I want to say something. I don't think that's only men are sexist, that only you have that attitude. I have it inside me. I have it towards other women. Say how, Lily. What is the attitude you have? Can you say? Um. If, if I put myself down thinking that I can't think, if I, if, I th if I put myself down because I want to make a decision based on what I'm feeling and not based on a rational thought, The way I relate to other women. <laughs> my judgment, you know, my judgment of you is based on, you know, are you good enough? You're not good enough. Because Your judgment of her because she's a lesbian, or go ahead. You're a woman, so I'll give less value to what you say than a man. I'll focus, you know, all my attention is going to go to what a man is going to say, and not what you. I'll recognize the man elder. I won't recognize the woman. Oh. Because I was about to speak and I deferred to the woman. In inadvertently just happened. The men should speak, but Lily was speaking and a man was asked to speak. And you didn't mean that at all, Joy. I know that. Lily, can I ask you? I'm, I'm willing to. I'm, I'm very willing to speak. I, I deferred to Lily because she's a woman. It's very complex. Pulling this apart, there's many levels to it. Is it a woman? Yes. Yes. Sexism is there no matter what we're talking about. There's a woman who seldom heard uh, in this culture. 
I want to support the notion that we may have hit an edge over here with the yes. men speaking, and now women are coming in, you know, appropriately with, with what happens for us to express that. But I want to come back and hear, I want to see if it's okay to get back to the men here talking about that. As a man, as a man, I, I feel, well, now, I'm, now I don't know what to do because I want to defer to the women, but, but I would. As, as a man, I feel that, uh, should I defer? Men, okay. men are being, I just want to make a comment here. Men are being asked to speak and be accountable, and at the same time, they're being asked to shut up. I just so want to point. So it's, nothing's going to be too loved in that. I just want to point out, there's a diversity amongst the women, and I want to support all the women in their powerful feelings and ideas and what we're saying to each other and not... Catherine. Which should go first? I, I felt that punk was the ouch, you know, and I, it was an ouch for you, and it's an ouch for you, and it an ouch for me, and it brought him, and you know, and it brought a lot of. I think it brought a lot of men out here who have who have dealt with that, and it, you know, so so much of it has been internalized that everything that you say is how I felt as a gay man, yeah. that I'm not really a man, and that I don't, I, I don't really deserve to feel okay about being a man with a man. Hmm. Yeah, I was, been spending some time with a man here at this workshop and, and this morning I realized I feel like it's not that we're being too visible that we're being too seen that there's going to be backlash we walked across campus yesterday and somebody just sort of looked at us, shook their head and walked away that at the very core of me, it's not okay. And that I don't deserve to be loved. And in a relationship. Because I'm not a man, really. I'd like to. Give him a moment to just feel that. Yeah, if we could take just a second of silence, it'd be good. I need to say. And it took me most of my life to realize that being marginalized for being a feeling man was actually different than being marginalized for being a gay man. And both of them I've been marginalized for. I I always had gay and feeling equal to each other. Yeah. I relate to that as a feeling man. I relate to that. But I, yeah. And that's both of those are sexism. Both are what, Randy? Sexism. Both are sexism. Yeah. yeah. So what some of us do in our life journey when we reach the point my brother has expressed is we decide as boys to become the best little boys in the world. That since we are inadequate, that we are basically flawed and can't really be fully boys or fully later men, we can at least be the best little boys in the world. And so we can learn to serve. And maybe we can <laughs> achieve some affirmation. Maybe we can achieve some self-respect from how we serve others. And we serve, and we serve. We serve in restaurants. We serve in world work. We wait for others to give us our turn. We serve, and we serve. For 42 years, I've worked in social change movements, 
and I've seen so many of my sisters and brothers serving, serving, serving the anti-war movement, fighting imperialism. Bayard Rustin organized the March on Washington in 1963, and he could not stand up for himself as a gay man, even though he was a phenomenal African-American civil rights leader. We serve. We serve. And I'm sitting here shaking because it's so extraordinary in this uh, in this setting of people who care about the world and about so many issues that we should actually be noticed for our identity. Uh, not that we don't have these other identities, not that we're not African American or white or anti-imperialist. We are everywhere. And at the same time, it's so terrifying. It, it isn't even easy for all of us to have a voice to say what we want to say. We know how to be best little boys or best little girls, whatever. But here, there's a kind of floodlight on us, and it scares me. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Um, I know that while I love gay men, I'm still learning about that, and gay men threaten me. Because, because of who we might be for one another or who we may not be for one another. Um, I'm more at home with women. That's a hard thing in this community. I think that in the oppression, of the la in the political organization of the last few years, we've created some kind of solidarity between lesbians and gay men, but it, there are things that we haven't talked about yet. Jack? Yeah, I hear that's me. very important. I just want to frame that. The internalized hatred of ourselves as gay men and women and preferring not even to hang out with other lesbians or gay men. Julie, can I bring something in here, please? Yep. We have talked, and I totally, I know th this is really important, but there's another voice that I need to bring out, and that's... I'm speaking as Sarah, I'm not speaking as I've become very aware that every time I talk here, all sorts of labels and all sorts of stuff is put on me, or that's just the way it is. I'm speaking as Sarah, and in this case, I'm talking as identifying as a lesbian, because I love women. And what I want to talk about is how, as a lesbian, I'm not recognized as being soft or beautiful, all of the things that come along with being a woman, are there, not all of them, because all lesbians are nurturing. Um, and I guess what I want to say is just how much and how difficult that is as a lesbian to grow up under that. If I'm, I'm an athlete, so if I'm too, my hair's too short, or I'm too muscular, or I wear clothes that might be identified as being boys' clothes, how that feels for me. I'm not a man. I'm a woman. I don't want to be a man. I don't hate men. I love men. But because of those restrictions, it causes a problem between me and men, because that's where I feel it coming from. And women fear, not all women, fear being close to other women, or me, or other lesbians, because we are gay. And that's the view that I wanted to bring in because it's really difficult. I've gone from hair down to here and straightening it and shit, and finally I just said, forget it. I want my short hair, and I'm going to have it. <laughs> and lesbians are beautiful people. Yeah. I just want to say that we're listening over here. I'm feeling uh, drawn to invite the heterosexual or in question men and the heterosexual and in question women to go inside, or for all of us, and to, um, and Tomas, actually something you said made me think of this, and I've been on it ever since. I'll slow down. To go inside and introduce yourself and welcome your inner 
gay male or gay women. We all have her and him. We all have a male and female inside of us, I believe. My inner male is a gay, very cool guy. Um, and um, I invite you to, to go inside and find that part of yourself, because I think most of us are closer to that middle ground than the extreme. And, and, and well, that's cool. Well, that's fabulous, and I don't have a problem with that. But I think a lot of people who are homophobic are closer to that almost bi place than they realize. And diversity <laughs> among well, the lesbian one more community. Point that I want to make, I, I, and that is, if if anyone in this room has ever masturbated, they've made love with someone of the same sex. So get over it. It's the truth. Wow, things Excuse are getting me. wild. Hi. Can I say something from this side? I am going to speak. I'll be very brief because uh, I have a lot of things going on inside of me because a revelation came up towards the end of last night. Uh, I want, first of all, I want to express uh, a lot of gratitude and thanks because something, two ghosts that were buried came up yesterday. Um, I've had two relationships in my past um, with men who were homosexual. One is my brother and with another man, and they were uh, very violent and very threatening to my life, my existence, my survival. So I believe, I thought I had no problems with homophobia, gay issues. I thought I had resolved all of that. But yesterday I realized that I do equate male homosexuals with a threat to my survival in my life. That's, this side says you understand that. that. Maybe, maybe this side should speak. Someone, or should we just let that be? Well, I, I hear you, and I... And, I, um, and that's an issue that happens for a lot of people um, that now identify gay or straight, that that has happened to them. I'm sorry. I just need... I, I hear you. Sexual abuse is awful. It's, I just want to make sure we don't yeah. make sure we say that it's mostly heterosexual men that do sexual abuse. There was and no sexual abuse. Oh. Sexual abuse was, wasn't the issue. My brother is gay, and this other man fell in love with me. And um, we were working together, we were performing, and uh, he fell in love with me, and, and I wasn't open to that. But in both of those relationships, um, there was life-threatening situations. And because they were both homosexuals, well, I, I wasn't even thinking about that then. I just closed both of those relationships, buried them deep, locked the door, and said goodbye to them. But yesterday, they came bubbling up and crack! They're here again, and I'm very grateful that they're here for me to work on them again. You're also saying something about how if you weren't aware of it, prejudice may come up. Right. He's showing, I think, one way that homophobia develops right. is you have an experience, then you generalize it to a specific group, and it's very important to be aware of that so you don't hurt that group. I think that's really good personally, and it's dangerous to hear something like that, I think, in a group because people then equate homosexuality with violence. And I just want to say I've been in life-threatening situations in my life that had nothing to do with gay men. And uh, uh, yeah, it's just not the same thing. Um, the, 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 I could, the piece that I, I appreciate what you say, Lane, very much. The piece that I did appreciate about what you shared, the piece that I did appreciate about what you shared is I experience every day that visceral panic from straight men, uh, not attached to a particular history, and that it, if you're saying that the, the, the quality of the emotions that straight men feel about gay men is of a quality and an intensity that reminded you of your childhood abuse issues, I understand perfectly. And I think there's something, I mean, I think the statistic is like 50% of American gay men will be bashed in their lifetime. That's right. Will be bashed. I had seven men jump me. 
and beat me physically. Bashing means beating up, hate crime. 50% of gay men will have be experienced some sort of bashing in their life. I want to go back. That's right, and my homophobia, a part of my homophobia has to do with my fear of straight men. My fear of straight men, because when I was growing up, I was beaten every day, whatever, that's not the point. But, uh, and what I was saying, if I'm a, if I'm a, at least I'm a man. So, so that was like the one thing that I had, the one strength that I had. So know that at, at, at least I wouldn't be beaten for that. Um, and, if, and if I think about having a relationship with a man now, I get scared. When I'm walking with my friends on the street, I love my friends, I touch my friends all the time, but I'm afraid to touch them on the street, and I know that that's homophobic. But it's a fear of the dominant culture that makes me afraid to touch my friends on the street, that makes me afraid to look in their eyes. When I'm in a restaurant with someone and I'm looking deeply in their eyes, I'm afraid of what people will think about me, and that's my homophobia. I'm afraid, I will be, I'm afraid I'll be beaten for that. And so, and I have, and I just want to say, I have, I, and I can get out of it by being straight. Well, I'm glad you take the risk, actually. Because when you as a straight man risk that beating by touching your straight male friends, you're doing some work. Yeah. Just before we leave that, I just want to toss in really quickly that in the background also of this is the violence that's a part of male culture. Okay, and I, I don't want to just marginalize and say women aren't involved in it, but there's something to be said about men being socialized in America around games like football. I'll just stop with that one. And the military, I mean, we could go on and on. I've been trying to talk for a very long time. I'd like to say something. There, there's, there's two things I would like addressed here, slower. Um, one, they're both issues of violence. One is I would like it acknowledged how much violence is really perpetuated against this community because I do not think people realize that this community lives in fear of being tied to the back of a truck and dragged down the street, of being beaten, walking home. I want it acknowledged how much violence is perpetuated against this community. And I would like it acknowledged how much the rape culture and violence against women is feeding the heterosexism. How much it's, you're not a man if you're not banging a woman regularly every week, putting notches on your belt, being with the most beautiful women. I would like to hear somebody think, I'd like people to think about that and maybe if men have the courage to say something about that, that would be nice. But there is a lot of viol issues of violence around this issue, and I want that acknowledged. Yes. This topic is a very big umbrella. Yeah. Violence, domestic violence, sexism, hate crimes, homophobia. Yes. Go ahead. Gary wanted to speak, and I also know that Lily and Catherine had something also they wanted to get back to. Um, yeah, I would, I'd like to say something as a, as a, a white heterosexual male, and um, um, I'm just touched by what was said, and it's, it's really hard for me to understand how that can happen. But I wanted to say that... Um, that this idea of punk and this aggression and this idea of competition that, that, uh, that I and heterosexuals have a lot to learn, white men have a lot to learn from our, our gay brothers and sisters and heterosexual men and that uh, uh, 
uh, it's about time we pay attention and that we have issues to deal with between the men and that and, uh, it's got to stop. This is ridiculous. And this idea of a punk and I got to come out tough, I mean, that's bullshit. That isn't about being a man. That is not a man. And I, and, uh, um, Um, there's so much pain. I wondered about that was such a strong thing about the murder. I wondered if there also is a place in this group for rage and anger against that kind of white privilege. And I just, if we ever need to make a space for that, I want to. There is another relationship I would like to explore, and that is with a white male heterosexual Marine who happens to be my father. And I don't see that ghost here. And I keep protecting him by staying silent or talking to those who I can talk to. And I wish that we could find a way to dialogue with Tom or Bill or Harry, whatever his name is, and we don't stay there. And he doesn't look at me, and I'm not too sure he wishes to talk to me or hear me. Sometimes you end up having to move on, but we know that that voice is not yet represented. There's a part of that voice that I can speak to, because I've heard football players. Can, can, we're still talking in this, so please stop stopping me. So um, I, I want to speak something that we're saying. Um, Gary said the thing about kowtowing to the pressure about being a punk uh, is bullshit. And, I, and what I want to say is that it's not. Because I heard what you said, but what I want to say about that is uh, I want to talk about my fear. And uh, it's really fear of being annihilated. So uh, it's so clear to me that any way I marginalize people is uh, a way that I'm uh, not loving myself. It's something about me that I'm hating. Some, uh, a gay man in me, uh, a lesbian woman in me, a murderer in me, uh, a football player in me, a black American in me. And it's always a place that I'm hating in myself when I'm hating or close to someone else. And uh, uh, what happens when I'm fearful is I develop a form of idiocy. I can't say what I really mean. And I can't open to really hearing what other people mean. And so I forget who they are and I forget who I am. But I don't want to be annihilated. And I want to open my heart up and learn. But the football player, I don't want him to be annihilated either. I love the football player in me. You know, I, uh, I love uh, my awakening uh, homosexuality. And uh, uh, don't feel like I need to murder any part of myself to open up to the love that's available within me for everyone that I am and for everyone that the people are. So uh, my first year in San Francisco, I was walking with my girlfriend to a movie theater and this gay man was looking me over, giving me the good look. Yeah. And uh, what I felt at the time was angry, you know? I felt like I could, f yeah, you hear that? I felt first, like I thought this thing came up in me that I've been conditioned to do, the punk conditioning, that I'm gonna kick his ass. But you know, I missed an opportunity. I missed an opportunity to see this man thought I was good looking. That was some good stuff. He was right. So I, I want to love all of that in me. I, I'd like to. Oh, yeah. One last statement, and then we're going to move into a, a reflection. I just want to say something. I, I just feel like I, you know, I kind of we opened something in the beginning, and I, it took a lot for me to step out and to step out to Randy and 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 you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, slow. Okay, and and I want to say to Randy that you, you taught me something, a distinction. I felt a, an attraction to Randy all week. And what I realized, though, what you taught me is I have been I've been attracted to you as a feeling man. And that, and that, that whether you're, you're a gay man or a straight man, you are a feeling man. And, and that I can be attracted to you. And, and that's, that's, that's that right there, that I'm attracted to you as, as, a, as a fellow feeling man. And I really wanted to share that with you. And I want to share something else I learned that I really learned today in a way I never have known that being heterosexual is a privilege. 
and, it, and, it's, and it's one that I'm going to look into and work on. And, it's, and I've never known that like I have today. And I just really wanted to share that. So thank you for that learning. Thank you. I want to thank everybody. I want to also really honor all the vulnerability that came out today. It's precious and it's amazing to have it. Thank you. For more information and online discussions with the participants and facilitators of this and other tapes in this series, please contact us at our website, www iWorldwork.com. <laughs>